All right, all right. I hope everybody is doing well out there. I wanted to come in here today and make a video for all of my fellow gym junkies, which I am definitely one of those. For the last 12 years, I've woke up five days a week, Monday through Friday, taken a scoop of pre-workout, packed my gym bag with my daily clothes, a lunch box with my meal preps, hit the gym, got a sick workout, took a shower at the gym, threw some clothes on, and then went on about my day. That's been my routine Monday through Friday for the last 12 years. So I'm definitely a gym junkie. I know I don't have a freakishly amazing physique, but I'm all natural, no steroids, just dieting and training. So I typically stay lean. I can see my abs. I bulk up, put on strength in the wintertime, and I get as lean as possible in the summertime. That's kind of what I do. Uh, anyways, I had a pretty serious issue that I didn't realize I had. And who knows, maybe there's some people out there that have this exact same experience as me. So that's why I want to make this video. Now, as I said, for the last 12 years, I have been in there pumping iron like crazy. And, you know, I push myself to failure. All of my big lifts, squat, deadlifts, bench press, they're all above 315. I max out damn near every day, it seems like. You know, I'm always pushing myself. My final set is usually one rep. You know, it's I push myself to where I can only get one rep on my final set. And sometimes I'll even throw in a cardio session afterwards where I push myself till failure in cardio. And I know most people who train for any type of competition whether you're a bodybuilder, a power lifter, a sprinter, marathon runner, that's probably your strategy, right? You want to, if you're a bodybuilder, you want to get that last rep, you know, that last pump of blood into the muscles. If you're a power lifter, you want to get that PR, you want to get that one rep max. If you're a sprinter, you know, you're basically running till the wheels fall off. Same thing with a, a marathon runner. And... For myself, for the last 12 years, every night when I go to bed, I'll lay in bed for eight, nine hours maybe, but it would take me four hours of tossing and turning and being miserable, trying to fall asleep. Then eventually I fall asleep and I would get really low quality sleep, maybe for three to four hours. And then I would wake up before the alarm. And this went on for 12 years. I would talk to people about it. I would, you know, try to come up with a plan to figure out what's causing it. Maybe it's the diet. Maybe it was the caffeine. I just couldn't figure it out. So maybe it's lights late at night, you know, bright lights or whatnot. So I cut out the caffeine, cut out the bright lights, it would change my diet up. I mean, you know, I went keto for a while, a well-balanced diet. Uh, even went vegetarian for a little while. Um, I like the well-balanced diet the best, so that's typically what I went back to. But anyways, nothing was seeming to work. Like, nothing would fix it. So it was just like this for 12 straight years. Well, about 11 years, I should say, because I've been pretty good for the last year. But, yeah, couldn't sleep. And I don't know how many other people out there are going through the exact same thing I am. You're doing everything right. You're meal prepping, eating healthy. Um, you're working out properly. Your lifestyle is, is drug-free and a healthy lifestyle. And you should be sleeping, but you're not able to sleep. What's causing this? Well, I discovered for myself, and maybe this is something you could you might be experiencing as well, Pushing myself to that final rep, pushing myself till failure, whether it was strength training or cardio on a daily basis, was shocking my central nervous system. It was causing my cortisol levels to skyrocket, which that's the stress hormone. If you have a high cortisol level or high cortisol levels, you're going to be stressed out. Okay, It's going to make your body feel stressed out. And I'm not sure why, but it really seems to skyrocket whenever you are in a relaxed state. So 
you may not notice the high cortisol levels throughout the day, but once it gets late and it's time to relax and cut the lights off and just lay down, that's when the cortisol really hits. So you start to feel stressed out as hell, like right when you, it's time to fall asleep. You know, all of a sudden this stress all hits you at once. And it's like, you don't really even have anything to be stressed out about, but the cortisol levels are so high. You're stressing out about things that you shouldn't even be stressed out about. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just the way that it goes. And I don't know if other people experience this as well, but this is what was happening to me. So what I did to fix it was. Um, you know, after a while, I decided to relax a little bit in my training. Um, the first thing that really improved it was I cut out pretty much all cardio. So I was still strength training like hell, you know, still hitting my one rep max on bench squat and deadlift, you know, getting reps in too, you know, good high rep on high reps on my early sets, you know, 135, 225, 275. And then once I got to get over 315, you know, I'm getting close to my one rep max and I would kind of rest up a bit and get that one last rep, but I cut out cardio and I found myself some nights falling asleep, you know, um, on average, I was probably getting like six hours of sleep per night. Some nights I would sleep seven hours. Some nights I would sleep like five or six, but it was definitely improving and then I decided I'm not going to do my one rep max. Maybe once a month I'll test my one rep max, but I'm going to stay in like my four rep max range. So I'm not really going to shock my central nervous system too bad. I'm just going to get a good pump, a good workout, you know, and get some hypertrophy. And when I made that adjustment, instantly I lay down, boom, I just, I fall asleep like a rock. And it's so nice. You know, I can finally sleep like seven and a half, eight hours a night without waking up. And I just feel good all the time. Like I, I didn't realize how miserable I was until I corrected the issue. I had become accustomed to sleeping three or four hours a night. And, you know, I was just walking around brain operating at half of its capacity you know, energy levels like kind of fluctuating, going up and down. It's like I get these energy spikes and then I get drowsy. And it was just, it wasn't a good feeling, to be honest. But I didn't realize how bad it was until I corrected it. So how many of you out there are living a fit lifestyle? The diet's good. The training's good. Um, you're not partying and doing crazy things. You know, you're living a healthy lifestyle but you're just not sleeping right. You know, ask yourself, are you doing these things? Are you shocking your central nervous system constantly? Are you having these spikes in your cortisol levels? If so, you might want to think about it. Now, I'm not a doctor. Definitely not that. But, you know, this is just self-study that I've gone through. And I wanted to throw this out there because... If somebody would have told me this 10 years ago, my life would be a lot better than it is right now. I'll put it like that. And, you know, I don't really make any money on the videos off this channel. They don't get a lot of views. But, uh, you know, it allows me to talk about things that I go through in life that other people can find relatable and useful. So that's the purpose of this channel and that's the purpose of this video. So... Hopefully somebody out there found this video useful, found it relatable, and if you did, you're welcome. It'll really help things out quite a bit. Anyways, stay strong, stick with your commitments, don't give up, just make the proper adjustments, because ain't nobody trying to give up their addiction to the gym. You know, it's one of those addictions that's actually a good thing. It can interfere in your dating life. It can interfere in your social life, but it's worth it. You know, it's one of those few sacrifices that's actually worth it. 
to feel superhuman, to feel strong all the time, you know, to look at your body and constantly see it improving as you age, it's worth it. So we just got to make adjustments. All right, guys. Hopefully this video was somewhat informative, but that's about it for today, guys. Until next time, see ya.